Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at airflow over a sphere. In this case, it's a relatively small sphere of about 10 centimeters in diameter. Notice we still need to calculate the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number in order to calculate the Nusselt number. Once we have the Nusselt number, we can go ahead and find the transmission coefficient. And then from that, we can calculate the amount of heat flow from the sphere when a certain amount of air flows over the sphere. Now we've taken the velocity of the airflow at 0.8 meters per second. Here we have the diameter of the sphere. Here we have the air density and we have the, uh, what we call the co uh, viscosity of the air. Now here we calculate the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number based upon the, the values. Here we have the uh, specific heat of air and we have the conductivity constant of air as well. So that gives us two values, one for the Reynolds number, one for the panel number and for a sphere we want the Reynolds number to fall within this range, we want the, the panel number to fall within that range and if it does we can use this particular ca uh, calculation or this particular equation for the Nusselt number but notice that it's different from what we've seen before. We have a constant added to what we typically see as being the Nusselt equation and that's the one we use for a sphere. Again there's different equations but there's a good one we could potentially use. Notice that we have a predetermined exponent and we have a predetermined exponent for the Prandtl number, so for the Reynolds number I should say. And so once we plug those values in let's see what we get. So the new Nusselt number on this particular sphere is equal to 2 plus 0 0.6 times the Reynolds number, which in this case was calculated to be 4455, raised to the one-half power, and then multiply times the panel number, which was 0 0.863, raised to the one-third power. Again, notice that the panel number raised to the one-third power will come out to something pretty close to number one, as we would expect. So let's calculate that. 0 0.863 uh, raised to the one-third power. And notice it's 0.95, very close to 1. Now we multiply that times. Uh, 4455 raised to the 0.5 power. We multiply that times 0.6. And then we add 2 to that, plus 2. And we get 40.1. So we have a Nusselt number equal to 40.1. So now we're able to calculate the transmission coefficient h, which is equal to the heat conductivity of the air times the Nusselt number divided by the characteristic length. In this case, that will be the diameter of the sphere. So this is equal to 0 0.026 for air, the Nusselt number we just calculated, and we divide it by the characteristic length. In this case, would be 10 centimeters or 0.1 meter. So times 0 0.026 divided by 0 0.1, and we get 10.4. So the transmission coefficient will be 10.4 watts per square meter times Kelvin. And then, of course, once we want to then calculate how much heat dissipates from a warm sphere, so you put cool air across the sphere, we can then say that Q dot will be equal to the difference in the temperature divided by 1 over the transmission coefficient times the surface area of the sphere. And so that's how we find how much heat is extracted from a sphere when you blow air across a sphere. And that is how it's done.